Being a number two seed isn't easy, although it ought to be when you're playing in the first round of the NCAA tournament because you know you're going to be playing a 15 seed, and especially in this era where the top seeds in the region get to play as close to home as possible. For the Sooners, there was no reason to bitch because they were playing just 30 minutes from campus. Chesapeake Arena in Oklahoma City, and if you watch the game, you know how partisan of a crowd it was, and you give the Sooner faithful credit because they had a lot of support. You could tell by the volume of the Sooner crowd, so give them props. And believe me, uh, the Sooners really needed to feed off of the crowd for this game. Cal State Bakersfield, you give them credit. The Roadrunners did not play like a 15 seed, and they didn't just come to Oklahoma City to sightsee or to um, you know, take memories away from Bricktown. They didn't come to Oklahoma City thinking that they were going to win. They came expecting to win. Of course, if you didn't hear, the day before the game, the press conference, Ali Ahmed said that the Sooners were good but not great, and they were beatable. So there was some trash talking. And, you know, um, at the time and, and now, I basically feel the same way. I didn't have too much of a problem with it because, yeah, it made Ahmed maybe look foolish after the game because they lost. But let's face it, if you don't have confidence if you're in yourself, if you don't have confidence in your team, if you don't believe um, that you can win, then you're not going to. Okay, And that's where upsets happen. And part of it might be head games, but at the same time, you have to have the belief that you're going to win. And certainly the Roadrunners of Cal State Bakersfield played with that belief. And like I said, they did not play like a 15 seed at all. As a matter of fact, they might have overachieved in that first half because they were consistent from the field, especially Ali Ahmed. I mean, he was absolutely killing it. 16 points, including a 5-0 run by Bakersfield. All five of those points came by Ahmed. He's a center, a very versatile center. We mentioned that during the pregame that the Sooners had to be aware of him because even though he's a big guy, he's got a good touch, and he could shoot a mid to long range shot, and he did. He scored 16 points in that first half, and the Sooners looked like they were going to close a half with a double-digit lead, and they were um, up by only seven. So that gave Bakersfield a little bit of confidence. And the Sooners, by the way, if you watch the game, you know that they started the game off extremely poorly, down eight to nothing. Looked like they left their basketball game back in Cleveland County in Norman, in other words. But they eventually would gather themselves. You know, they started with an Isaiah Cousins jump shot. You know, Cousins ended the game with uh, 16 points. And um, he was one of three Sooners today uh, that I thought really stood out as far as uh, scoring. We'll talk about the other two in a little bit. But uh, the Sooners, even though the first half was a struggle, even though the free throw line, they were horrible, 4 of 12 from the free throw line in the first half, um, they would find ways to get runs in this game. Dante Buford coming off the bench I thought was extremely impactful in half number one. In fact, for the game, um, he ended up with uh, nine points, including a couple of threes. So Buford uh, was no question the Sooners' sixth man uh, today. He played a nice game um, in reserve role for the Sooners. Second half for Oklahoma, um, yeah, it was shaky. Very, very shaky because the first six minutes of that uh, second half, they only scored four points. And even though this was a turnover-prone game for Cal State Bakersfield, they'll be the first to tell you that, they still were able to chip away at Oklahoma's lead and eventually retake the lead. Remember, they were down at one point by 12 points, and they had a one-point lead. But then Buddy Heald showed why he is the nation's top player and should be the wooden award winner. And you saw him get Oklahoma the lead right back. And there was one play in particular halfway through the second half in which he not only is able to poke away the ball from a guard from Bakersfield, but he's actually able to save the ball from going out of bounds and then gets it and then stops, pulls up from the wing, hits a three-point shot. That is typical Buddy Heald right there for you. Spectacular, and it gave the partisan crowd at Chesapeake even more reason to cheer. In spite of the fact that the Sooners held the lead for the final, you know, 10 minutes of the game, they could never shake Bakersfield away. The Sooners at times got careless with the ball. Um, they did improve their free throw shooting, though. Second half, the Sooners did improve their free throw shooting 9 of 11 from the stripe after going 4 of 12 from the stripe in half number one. Free throw shooting was much, much better. But still, uh, Bakersfield um, continued to be um, consistent uh, from 
uh, the field. They weren't very good from three-point range, only 27% from three-point range. So that pretty much held the form. But the guards were able to penetrate inside and also to um, play good team ball, the extra pass, finding the open man down low. And Bakersfield just never went away. And even though the final score says Oklahoma won by 14, that final TV timeout was under four minutes ago. The Roadrunners were only down four points and had the ball. Bakersfield came that close with a two- or three-pointer to being down by one possession to make it anybody's game with plenty of time well over three to go. Thankfully, though, they couldn't convert. And on the other end, Jordan Woodard hit a three-pointer, and that would begin another run for the Sooners. In fact, the Sooners ended the game on a 13-3 spurt. Ali Ahmed, who was so spectacular in half number one for Bakersfield, did not score a point at all. In fact, Woodard, uh, for the game, loved the way he played. Five of eight shooting, had 15 points, including three threes. In fact, for the Sooners, 11 of 20 from three-point range, and that was maybe the big, big difference in this game, the fact that they really, really whipped um, the uh, word runners as far as three-point shooting, 55% to 27. Field goal shooting, the Sooners, 50%. And Cal State Bakersfield, 45. I think the Sooners and all of us are aware that to be a Final Four team, the play will, no question, have to step up, okay? They know that to make a deep run, they have to play better than what they played today, not to take anything away from the Roadrunners. Up next for the Sooners, it's a showdown in the second round on Sunday against Virginia Commonwealth. Minor upset today as... Um, VCU defeated Oregon State, and it's been a nightmarish tournament so far for the Pac-12 with Colorado, Arizona, uh, USC, and we saw earlier on Friday Cal, the fourth seed, lose to Hawaii, and now Oregon State, the seventh seed, bow down to uh, VCU. Again, it should be a partisan crowd for the Sooners on Sunday, and they'll have to step it up against the VCU team from the Atlantic 10 who can play ball. So that'll wrap it up, and yeah, you know something? Sooners didn't always look good on Friday, but it could have been a lot worse. You know, just ask that team from East Lansing. They were a number two seed earlier in their game against uh, Middle Tennessee State, and it was the Blue Raiders who made Michigan State look black and blue. The Spartans, two seed, and my pick to go to the Final Four, and a lot of people's pick to actually get to the national championship and win it. They're out in the first round, Tom Bizzo's squad, who eliminated OU last year. Well, they're done. So that's it. Final score again, 82-68. Sooners. Wasn't always pretty, but they close the game out strong. And Buddy Heald gets 27 points, five rebounds, including three threes. And he was solid from the free throw line in the second half. Boomer Sooner.